I just want to use our own terminology for for things. Just like how we don't want to call people special guests. Right, you want to call them your victims. <laughs> Normally I come on here and tell you that my client is innocent. Okay. This is a different story. He's guilty. I had no idea that his father had passed away, let alone murdered. Mm -hmm. Right here in North Carolina. To be known for being a... Do you believe if you were to get caught and were to be tried and sentenced mm -hmm. that you should lose your right to vote? It's always personal. Aren't all Uber drivers technically human traffickers? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> to be somebody that's that desperate that you pay for it. I could see you paying for it if I, I wasn't in your life. Remember, don't do crime. Don't you, video the crime. If you do do crime, don't record the crime. And also, if you do do crime, don't talk about the crime, especially not on social media mm -hmm. or anywhere where it can be recorded. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm Andrew, and this is my other host, Nona, or our other host. Other host. Do you guys hear that? On the show, the other host, I'm one, you're the other. We are hosts. How, so... Here's a question that I asked Joe. Mm -hmm. How do you, if you have two hosts or something, are you both co-hosts or are you both hosts? You're both co-hosts. You're both co-hosts? Yeah. I was trying to think if they talked about it in um, Anchorman. They would be co-anchors. Is, is that what they say? I have no idea, okay. but that's what they would be. We should use that terminology instead. We should be anchors. You literally have said so many times, this is not a talk show, no, no. This is not a news show, no, no. I know, but I just want to use our own terminology for, for things. Just like how we don't want to call people special guests. Right, you want to call them your victims. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, Nona. Yes, Andrew. We're talking about stuff today, stuff in the news, and something that popped up in the last day or so. And I, reading this... Uh, snippet headline from Google right now, Daniel Green, for those that don't know who that is, is the man that's been serving in, in North Carolina prison for uh, killing Michael Jordan's father, James Jordan, a long, long time ago. Um, a judge has called for his release. So upon clicking on this, it's a retired judge that's calling for it. Gotcha. But just like any other political game out there right that's usually like the, that has weight behind it yeah it's like the first strike or the first punch mm -hmm. like hey politically speaking and what was the group that was assisting him like the innocence pro yes. was it the innocence project i just heard about that i, I might have heard about it the other time too but i just that was brought up again um by a guy that was on rogan back in january Apparently, 38 days after he was on Rogan, he killed somebody. I learned about it a day or two ago. But yeah, it's another nonprofit like that. And they opened up the story saying, the, the guy that was there from whatever that project is, he said, I'm here today. Hold on, we got a squeaky dog. Can we just leave that? Yeah, I was just leaving. Okay. He. You guys got all three dogs. Yep. One snoozing behind, the other two are goofing Walking off around. behind the camera. Yeah. So he opens it up telling Rogan, normally I come on here and tell you that my client is innocent. Okay. This is a different story. He's guilty. The guy's sitting there right next to him. And he starts telling the story and he said he served his time for X, Y, and Z, but it's like a victim thing. He grew up, you know, his dad was a drug dealer. The whole, like everybody in their family was deaf except him, which was really like literally everybody, like his aunt, his mom, his dad. Okay. And he's like telling this whole story and he's like, yeah, he served 25 years, but he's reformed and here's, you know, how our project came into it and all this and that. And then 38 days later, he went and murdered somebody. Very reformed. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, that'll be the new audio instead of very demure. Or however it is, very reformed, very reformed. How, wait, how's I was, have no idea. It was Joe who was saying it. I'd never heard of it. It was a woman. Talking to her cat. I have no idea. It was, oh my gosh. I've never seen the video or meme or whatever it comes yeah. from. 
Okay. I just heard Joe saying it over and over well, and over. We, and I was like, what are you saying? Because we brought it up. What are you saying? What right. is... My laptop's not cooperating. Come on, Chrome. Okay, apparently it's locked up. So you said, what was it called? The Innocence Project? I was asking, is that who yeah, was I'm, assisting him? I'm, the I'm, Innocence Project. I'm looking that up. That's what I was asking if I was looking up the correct thing. Innocence oh. Project. Oh, cases right there. Boom. Good job, Google, for bringing up exactly what I wanted to find. Death penalty. AJ Butler, what I said his name is. Something green. Yeah. Let's type a search by name. This is. Hey, you guys actually notice as I'm always complaining about people's websites. You guys actually have exactly what I needed in this moment <laughs> to look this up. I didn't have to do any extra clicks. Right. As soon as you open it up, you can look Joy. up. Joy. Uh, green. Uh, Kevin Green, Edward Green, Anthony Michael Green. So it looks like that's not the case. Mm. But okay, so well, I'm sorry. That says exonerations. Oh. So maybe it's because he's not exonerated yet. Okay. <laughs> um, our work, restoring freedom. Oh, I want to bring up a point that somebody made recently. Okay. Um, remind me about felons. So remind me about that after I pull this up. Essence Project. Very reformed. Green, uh, Jordan. I'll just type Jordan. Jordan, Brown, Archives, no, Jamar, Jordan. Why can't my laptop just work? Come I on. Yeah, I don't think you're going to find it that way. Yeah. All of those names are way too generic. You're going to find so many other. Yeah. All right, Daniel Green. Got this pulled back up again. This is his name. Daniel Green Defense. Uh, Daniel Green who got life in prison for killing Jordan. Daniel Green, the Washington Institute. It was a it was a woman. I remember them showing her. She talked a lot on the. Mm -hmm. um, she had a she had a law office in like Cary yeah. or Raleigh. I can't remember one of the two. Defense nonprofit. I'll look that up. Maybe it'll come up. Nope. Um, yeah, it's not. You would think with how popular this story is that it would come up right away. Well, somebody was assisting him, whether it's the same person yeah. or not. Daniel Green, Defense Nonprofit, James Jordan. Anyways, we watched the, what was it, a docu-series? Yeah, it was like, or like five, a mini, six episodes. Yeah, like, that. like a mini-series. Yeah. Yep. So. And I had no idea that his father had passed away, let alone murdered mm -hmm. right here in North Carolina. I had no idea. And as we talked about, born was, and raised here. It so. was all a whole like Illuminati thing. Mm -hmm. You're know, like, Oh, he didn't speculation about, yeah, about not taking money or something like that. Or they there I've, I've heard just like any other conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. there's every possible variation that whatever fits that group. Right, right. Absolutely. Right? And oh. it happened in like 96. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, so obviously no social media, yep. no anything for tracking. Yeah. Well, primitive, because he had a car phone. That was one of the big deals That's that they made. That's right. But the last phone call was she's still squeaking yeah. out at the top of the stairs with her toy. <laughs> um, the last call was to somebody important in the case. Was it the person who... Yeah, I don't remember. Off the top I, of my yeah, head. I don't remember. It's been like what six months since we saw it now at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's been. A I while. think we watched it right when we started the show, and we're seven months this week. Yeah, it was. I think it was exactly six months ago. Somebody that we saw it. Um, before I start talking about the the felony thing that I wanted to bring up, because I think that's actually a good conversation for us to have, based on the context that I'm going to give you. But when I was checking out at Costco the other day, when I was getting the thing, the croc or the Ninja Crock-Pot. Mm -hmm. Is that what do you still call it a crock crock pot? Sure. Yeah. Um call it a slow cooker. Yeah. So I got crock pot is actually the brand that's like calling all tissue Kleenex. Okay. Um, so I was getting that, the vacuum sealer, and then that other chair. And the guy at self checkout was like, Oh, you just like getting a new apartment? And I had my ring on. Oh, that's it, so cute. Yeah. You're getting your first apartment, Andrew. <laughs> You're I was like, so special. I was like, no, the chair is actually uh, for 
helping with some podcasts that stuff. He's like, Oh, what's your podcast? So I told him the name. He's like, that's easy to remember. And I was like, yeah, if you, you know, subscribe or whatever, leave a comment. So we know it's you. I haven't seen a comment yet, but, um, he was like all, he was all about it. Like wanted to ask me all kinds of questions. How many subscribers do you have? Where, where do you guys do it at? You know, what, what kind of things do you talk about? And I'm just sitting I here trying to pay for three things. That he just jumped to, you were getting your first apartment with one chair, one slow cooker yeah. and one food saver. Yeah. That's all a man <laughs> needs. That's literally just one chair. So sit and scroll on your phone on your one chair, yeah, two, eat out of your one slow cooker. Two, two tangents here for this, right? Okay. The first one, I got the Costco self checkout type treatment at Harris Teeter yesterday because okay. I was in the regular line and this little old lady that was over by the self checkout was like, Oh, honey, can I, I can check you out over here. Oh, honey. Yeah. So she brought me over to the self checkout. She called She's, you honey. Yeah. And she scanned all, she was like a little old, like 80 year old woman. Yeah. yeah. And she, scanned all of my stuff at the self-checkout, bagged it right there mm -hmm. for me. And I was like, this is kind of awkward because I feel like everybody's looking at me. <laughs> but, um, so that was the first tangent. Hello. The other one was about uh, the other rookie in the WNBA. You see that she's been making a big deal about how she doesn't get paid oh, enough. Oh, she's paying $8,000 yeah. a month for her rent. Yeah. Yeah, and she's living above her means. Yeah, seventy six or seventy four thousand a year is her salary, mm -hmm. but that's that's her. Yeah, base we, salary. we talked about this um, during the height of NBA season, and I said that women make under a hundred thousand dollars a year, and men are making like in the millions but, for the NBA. And but it's because people aren't watching them, so sponsors aren't paying. But here's the then the whole WNBA is subsidized by the NBA. Mm -hmm. So here's the problem. Okay, she went and signed that lease. Mm -hmm. before like she knew that she wasn't making enough money. So to make a big deal about it after you put yourself in a bad financial situation, it's like, okay, say you have like an amazing credit score, right? But you don't make any money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I understand. Obviously she was betting on herself, hoping for endorsements, and hoping she, for and all she, of those things. She probably realistically does make enough money, mm -hmm. but that's why she was very clear to say, the WNBA but she, salary but she's, does not. But she's also the one that every time Caitlin Clark does right, yeah, something good. I remember. I she's remember. Everything Caitlin Clark. Right. That's what she was known for. Yeah. So, anyways, back on track, talking about the felony See, thing. I, rem I know exactly who you're talking about, but I literally could not even say her name. Yeah, I just had it. Because all she was known for was like on Caitlin. Yeah, there was, there was a vote for MVP, rookie. Rookie of the year, not MVP. Mm -hmm. And she got a single vote. Kaylin Clark got all of the other votes. And she made a big deal about that. Of course. And it would have been unanimous, but the person that voted for her only voted for her so that it wouldn't be unanimous. <laughs> wow. Yeah. To be known for being a shit. Yeah. So, going back to the felony thing, okay. and the James Jordan stuff, tie all this back in. Um, people brought up how arbitrarily different laws can be applied. So for example, let's say, you know, you took something out of the mailbox, right? Even mm -hmm. our own mailbox, right? Mm -hmm. And then somebody else's mail and you accidentally open it. Right. Theoretically, that's a felony. That's mail or mail fraud or whatever. So theoretically, you're a felon. Okay. Do you believe if you were to get caught and were to be tried and sentenced mm -hmm. that you should lose your right to vote? So you're saying what I'm asking specific, is are, are all felonies equal? Yeah. So, okay. So I understand what you're asking. Yeah. So um, no, not all felonies are equal is my blanket answer, but being a felon in general. So then my next question would be, if you're in a James Jordan type position mm -hmm. where you are exonerated okay, and you have lost your rights right. and now you still potentially have to fight to get those rights back, mm -hmm. your yep. gun rights, no, absolutely. voting rights. So say, okay, perfect example. Somebody was a registered nurse. They were um, in the wrong situation at the wrong time, wrongfully committed for a crime that they did not commit. And then say the innocence project stepped in and exonerated them. And they've at that point lost their license to practice medicine. 
So what do you do then? Do you appeal to the state that you live in? Do you, um, well, for anything that's like, uh, felony wise like that for like voting firearms, things like that, that's all federal level. Okay. So then, yeah, you, there'd be some, there's then, some, so you're now out of jail, yeah. a free human being, yeah. but you cannot work. Yeah, you can't work, you can't vote, you right. can't own a farm. You can't then pay rent, yep. buy a house, yep. pay your bills. Yep. If like you had children prior to being incarcerated, you're getting them back from CPS or family members or whatever the case may be, because obviously you didn't commit this crime and you're a free person. But again, now you can't pay for a roof over your head. And so at that point, is often when they sue, correct? Yeah, you have to sue to get your rights back. Right. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it's for one, it's not guaranteed, and the precedent has been set that you can't sue. And to make an analogy, it's similar to if you sign forced arbitration, right? Like you sign up for something, you buy a new car, whatever, and in whatever their documentation that you sign during whatever the process is, mm -hmm. you sign a forced arbitration clause. Now, if there's some sort of something comes up and you're injured because your vehicle spontaneously catches on fire, you can't even sue them. You have to go to forced arbitration. So you can't have a jury of your peers mm -hmm. because you signed that document. It's the same kind of thing. You, when you accept that plea deal or um, are arrested or not arrested, but found guilty, you are essentially foregoing the opportunity to ever get it back. And there's not really a path to get it back. Gotcha. So now you have to have, you know, all these high powered attorneys and you know, people that you have to pay money to, to try and fight for this stuff back. Mm -hmm. But th they are attempting to set that precedent. Mm -hmm. And when you have, but they're also betting on you winning because that's how they're going to get paid. Well, not the nonprofit, but they will from the news and things like that. So yeah, like they want to take your case, especially high profile thing like Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like they, they want to make a name for themselves. They want to be the next DA or they want right. to be the next right. you know person on the uh, Supreme court, whatever the case, everybody's got an agenda. It's always personal. Uh, I mean, nobody is actually selfless. I don't believe that. But I mean, it kind of has to be like, why would you do something if it, if you were going to lose your job? Like if you're like, oh, if I take this case, I'm definitely going to lose my job and I'm never going to be working as an attorney again. Like why would, why would you do that? There's a little bit of self-preservation that has to be involved. Why would they lose their job? I, I'm just saying, I'm throwing it out there. Like they know that they're not going to lose their job, but if you knew right, that. So that's just, that's not, but there's if, no point to it. But if you knew that there was a, a potential opportunity to, they're not going to take that case. Right. So I just, they wouldn't lose their job. So that's yeah. a non issue. So um, this came up last night because, and I, I guess I can say her name because she's a public. No, do not say anybody's name if they were a victim or a but parent she, of a victim. She posted about it though herself it, publicly. <laughs> I, I, I don't feel comfortable okay. with you saying her name. So I know somebody, maybe she'll come on and talk about herself. She's here local. Mm -hmm. The Wilmington oral surgeon that was found guilty yesterday. Did you see that? No, I did not. Yeah. But I'm happy found, to hear that. Found guilty on... How many counts? Like everything he's going to serve 80. Right. How many victims? Uh, this says found guilty on 24 charges related to sexual abuse of multiple patients, according to a representative of New, Han New Hanover Just County. Just multiple patients. Clerk. That's all they say. Yeah. Um, he faced a total of nearly 30 related charges, including multiple counts of felony, second degree, sexual offense, sexual battery, indecent liberties with a child. He's going to get beat up and probably killed in prison. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, statutory sex offenses and second degree forcible sex offense. Here's my question. Who is working in a surgical suite and just... I guess leaves the surgeon by himself for an undisclosed amount of time. Oh gosh. I can imagine that it happens all the time. I can see a scenario where somebody has to step out to get something because they forgot something when they scrubbed in minutes, maybe like how 
for for what the stories I read, which mm-hmm. I did not deep dive because most of it was anonymous or at least anonymous to me, right? Like it's just stuff that these people, they're their stories, but like you said, the news isn't saying the names, but the people who were involved are independently saying I was a victim. So I only know a couple things to piece together. The amount of time for an oral surgery patient to go from being anesthetized to whatever the procedure duration is, unless there's some sort of complication. And then he's like, I need everybody to step out. Oh, I was thinking potentially it could have happened in the private room after the surgery occurred. Post-op. Post-op when the patient is to come to and the surgeon potentially delayed the coming to. Oh, I'm actually, just speculating no, I think on that you might one. be right. So I'm completely speculating on that, just remembering when I had my wisdom teeth taken out. Here's how part of the investigation started. His license was suspended February 2019. The North Carolina State, State Board of Examiners investigated, I guess it's Hassan or Hassan, H-A-S-S-O-N, for charging Medicaid to keep patients sedated for long periods of time. Mm. So you're probably right. They come out Completely or they're supposed to come out. They're moved to the recovery suite. Or I'm, I've I'm, never been in this facility, so I'm speculating on what they were moved I'm just to. going off of memory from when I had my wisdom teeth taken out. You're put in a small room to come to. The nurse is to walk in and out, kind of check on you if you need assistance of any kind. Um, I'm thinking that's potentially when the patient or victim was alone. The surgeon had their way. This dude has a track record even before this. In 2011. Does it say what the office name is? Wilmington Oral Surgeons. Is that where you went? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, in 2011, they, but the victims that I read said it was like clear and obvious that something had happened. Like they knew, felt, whatever. So are you saying that potentially? Honestly, I don't remember. Did you have this it doctor? Was 2008 or nine, 2008 or 2009. It doesn't say when he started, but it says there's other, he has a track record. Oh, and uh, patients between 12 and 69. So he didn't have a very specific preference. Nope. As long as they were unconscious. Victims of convenience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so in 2011, his license was temporarily suspended for performing tooth implants without completing state required continuing education. In 2014, he was charged for driving while intoxicated and ultimately pled guilty to that as well. So he's got like in early 2020. So basically uh, he has acted above the law. Yeah. In early 2020, one of his accusers was awarded a default $4 million judgment and a suit accusing the dentist of assault and battery, gross negligence and negligent infliction of emotional distress. Uh, the plaintiff identified in the lawsuit as Jane Doe, so anonymous, um, alleged uh, alleged Hans- Hassan had assaulted her while she was partially sedated for her wisdom teeth extraction. So, yeah. Mm. I wonder, uh, Wilmington, formerly operating at Wilmington Oral Surgery, Michael Hassan. Michael Hassan, Wilmington. I want. I just want to know specifically when he started there. Um, when when did he die? Came up <laughs> soon. <laughs> when did he start? They there's a business listing for him still and it says permanently closed. That comes up when you search his name. Good. Um, start at. Wilmington Oral. Let's put that. Verdict reached, former oral surgeon, closing arguments, warming. Yeah, it's everything's about the case. So it's it's I would have to spend some time looking at this. The one thing that I did notice is there were two different 
um, like the, not the mugshot, but like his like work headshot. Mm -hmm. And there was one where they, one news agency used his work headshot and then the other one used his arrest mugshot. And that kind of shows you like the trend. You can already kind of tell what the tone is going to be when you open an article. Mm -hmm. And they were exactly what I thought. The one they used the mugshot was more like going for the kill. Mm -hmm. And the one that used his um, business headshot. Upstanding citizen of Wilmington, North Carolina, wrongfully accused. Oh, no. it, was, it was more like the teetering. Like, we don't want to be sued for saying something bad Whatever. about the bad guy. Yeah. So. Rip him a new one, please. Yeah. I had like vaguely heard about this, but the first thing I thought when I saw her post about this, when she said the trial concluded, whatever, so many victims now have peace, or, like it, the whole, you know, her, her talking about it in her way, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that what I'm saying is correct, but I'm just saying she had her way of saying what she wanted to get off her chest. Um. But when I read that, the first thing that jumped to my mind was the child or the human trafficking stuff. Because I didn't know this guy's name. What human trafficking the stuff? The stuff that's been going on here in Wilmington and Raleigh and Durham with Jesse and that whole group. Oh, yeah. I thought. I mean, we can talk about that. Yeah, I thought it was somebody. You, stop. I thought it was somebody arrested in relation to that. Mm. And that. And that was two summers ago, wasn't it? Yeah, I feel like that was twenty twenty two. What were the other people's names? You knew some. You knew some of their names, right? Yeah, I. Why I, is my my laptop and it's only in Chrome? It just keeps locking up. No idea. Um, and I could not say their names off of the top of my head. Jesse Bright, Wilmington, Uber driver. I love how they call me an Uber driver, not an mm -hmm. attorney. Uh, and they used. They mm -hmm. used yeah, that from the video of him recording mm -hmm. the cop. Uh, okay, Wilmington Uber driver, even though he wasn't here when that happened. Six people have been arrested. Yeah, they had just moved to Raleigh. Yeah, three hundred. And his felonies. wife had posted on all of the social media, like, I'm so proud of my husband. He has such an amazing job. She talked, she talked in depth one time about how he paid off all of her student loans. And all I could think was, like, what Uber driver has the money to just mm -hmm. pay off another person's student loans. Yeah. Can you pay off my student loans, Andrew? I don't know how much do you have. Okay. Well, don't answer that. The um, answer is no, you can't. I mean, maybe, but I don't know. Christopher Todd Evans. That's, yeah. That's yeah. the one that. So yeah, 3.75 million in bond. I did just see that somebody in another state, I believe Texas, had like a $5 million bond for murder and bonded out like the same day. I want $5 million on hand. Well, you pay 10%. Whatever. Typically. I want 10% of $5 million yeah. on hand. You pay 10% to the bail bondsman, that is, right. not to the Got court. Got it. Um, I was saying that for them in case they don't know that. So, yeah, do you know any of these other guys? Christopher Todd, Christopher Slate Arrowwood. Uh, mm -hmm. Dustin Lee Anderson, Michael Hunter Snow. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Any of these faces? Mm -mm. And what year was it that they got arrested? Um, when did this article come out? I love how they use him too as like the prime mm -hmm. example. April 26, 2023, so a year and a half ago. Okay, but that's not when they were arrested. That's when the article came out. Six people have been arrested and charged. That's it was the middle of summer. I remember that when it actually happened this article is being written as if it had just happened. Mm. But again, his mugshot's not in here. So I wonder, I wonder if there's been any update. Uh, you can leave an Maybe anonymous it was tips. Spring, whatever. Six, the one guy, you knew the, that one, Chris, Christopher Todd. You said he talked about it openly, right? Or yeah, he, he was very open about what he did. He, it was like Cape Fear Escorts or something like that. And that was his business. And he started it out of like pure gold maybe in like 2006, 2007, 2008 timeframe. Is that the place that's... It's that's now called like the Cheetah Club. Yeah. 
and it everybody in Wilmington like knew what he did and I want to I want to say something really quick for people that aren't from pull Port- up the actual the, not Port City Daily but like an actual article I'm it's really bothering me on on that I have the, the date nec- the next thing is inaccurate. Reddit viral attorney and Uber driver charge I'll open that in a new tab um, WECT is from January 11th. Okay, it was they're definitely about, not winner. No, but they're they're talking about the investigation. Yeah. Uh, December 30th, 2023. Man given 62 additional charges in April 26th, 2023. Okay. Je- oh, Jesse. It says Jesse was given an additional, or at least his name was highlighted. Okay, <laughs> fear escorts. Okay, I was right about that. They used yeah. his, what is that picture from? Like when he worked It's as probably an like his ID tag. For an Uber driver? No, to get into the courthouse. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Coastal Carolina Human Trafficking Task Force, the charges related to criminal activity. So Christopher Todd Evans is now, or I guess still has, 229 felonies. That guy's never getting out. No, no. Um, Jesse, I just felt bad for his kid. Jesse was charged with four felony counts. So it's just saying. So we're just talking about felons today, apparently. Yeah. So our 99th episode is all about committing <laughs> crime. Yeah. Don't do crime. Man, I bet. I bet they just grilled them because of that video. Because, you know, like if you were to if you were to do something and like talk about your employer or something like that. And then you were to be fired and they could like use that as additional fuel. Okay. So for him to be going around making viral videos about how to get out of traffic stops and DUI checkpoints and stuff. Meanwhile, he is assisting in trafficking humans. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what were his four felonies? Uh, it just says four counts of promotion and profiting from prostitution. Ah, uh. $60,000 bond. But to the best of my knowledge, investigation continues. This is January of this year. Uh, nine months after six men were arrested. So nine months back from January would be April. Okay, fine. It was April. Whatever. I really thought it was the summer before. It does seem like it's been going on longer. Yeah. Uh, no, I, no, I know why. They moved the summer before. That's what it was. They moved like August 2022. And then all of this came out just a few months after they moved. I know why I messed up my timeline. Our prosecutor said the investigation. So everybody else was arrested here in Wilmington area. He, I believe, turned himself in to Raleigh PD. To um, the magistrate. Right. That's And that's why he didn't have a mugshot. Because yeah. he was, I'm sure, aiding. Let's see here. Uh Prosecution said that the investigation has been going on for at least 15 years. Yeah, absolutely. It's been going on the entire time that K-Fair Escorts has been in business. So here's the thing, like I talked about a while back. But yes, I'm sure they had high profile people like judges on the client list. So that is why they have not been taken down earlier. Probably. Um, seven plus suspects wait trial. The sheriff's office is still locating victims. So they're trying to continue this for as long as possible. Absolutely. And good for them. Well, I mean, that's dragging it out for the victims too. Okay. So they're just making sure it's going to stick. Right. Uh, let's talk about it being an issue within the community. Mm-hmm. La, la, la. Uh, 64% of trafficking victims in the area experience homelessness and housing instability before they are approached by the trafficker. So what do you do? You go to the homeless shelter? Bad no, homeless shelter? Uh, no, I'm sure they picked up their girls downtown at the bars, got them hooked on drugs. I'm going to take care of you. You just do me this one favor. I need you to go to this party. I'm so, sure that's how it started. So this is on the Wilmington subreddit, which I actually just joined the other day because I was responding to somebody talking about 
issues with buying a car. Okay. It just, it happened to be, I, I was on Reddit. I opened Reddit from uh, my account. And so the podcast Reddit came up first. And then the second one was the Wilmington thing. Okay. And then I was like, oh, I'll join it. And so I've seen like a bunch of stuff in there. But anyway, so this is in the Wilmington subreddit, which people that get mad when I'm like, this is the only Wilmington that anybody ever talks about. They're like, the Wilmington, Delaware. Okay. The Wilmington Reddit subreddit is for Wilmington, North Carolina. It's not Wilmington dash NC. It's just Wilmington and it's Wilmington, North Carolina. So I win. Anyways. Uh, wow, Andrew. <laughs> viral Wilmington attorney and Uber driver charged in human trafficking case with over 150 victims. Port City Daily says, first comment. Wow, that's crazy. And yet totally a Wilmington headline. Is Wilmington becoming the new Myrtle Beach? Please don't say that. That would make me so sad. The response to that. Wilming Speaking of Myrtle Beach, we should talk about that. Which about? About the sheriff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to read some of these, but we can go ahead and talk about that. No, no, no. Read that and then we can. Oh, it just the reminded me of that. The next person said Wilmington will always need a good hosing off. <laughs> and, not, and yet no mention of opioids, at least in the title, but you know where... Uh, you know, there were some involved somewhere in the story. Oh, absolutely. Uh, defense attorney who is also an Uber driver. The article is a bit confusing. I'm confused by this. So it's somebody that doesn't know who he is. But yeah, it, a lot of those, I, I, some of the, like the court appointed people, like don't necessarily always do it full time. And I don't know if he was doing anything at all. The whole, the whole reason, like, the whole yeah, I never, I, of, I never understood his job because I never believed that he was actually working, only to find out that he was actually just an escort driver. Well, from what his wife had said, that he was like, he did like traffic tickets and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't even know who he worked for. Exactly. Because he wasn't actually working. Yeah. It was all a facade. Uh, somebody from Wilmington said, wow, that attorney's from Wilmington? Small world. I saw that video years ago and I live here. So okay. Saw the video. Didn't realize it was here. Funny. Uh, what's the name of the attorney? Jesse Bright. So he wasn't an Uber driver. He was human trafficking. Yeah. I mean, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, aren't all Uber drivers technically human traffickers? Oh God, <laughs> that's terrible. I mean, they're not wrong. It's just if you're getting line. literal on this. How's the the? Oh my gosh, he's right, but he's out of line. I can't remember how it goes. It's from a uh, um movie, okay, or TV show. Cap the new Captain America. That's what he says to. The Nazi guy. Mm. Uh, in his defense, he's only charged with four felony counts, not over 150 like the guy. In the, uh, so the headline title is clickbait. No, it's not. He's, wh what, what does 150, like one felony is too many, right? That's Okay. I, I understand what they're getting at, though, that they intentionally sensationalize Jesse because he's, he's the notorious more well -known. on. Yeah, he's the more well-known. Right. Even though he had the least amount of felony counts out yeah. of everybody. I understand what they're getting at. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's just like the whole debate now. So apparently there's been some apartment complexes in Texas and mm -hmm. San Antonio and also yeah, in Arizona. Like four or so. And the uh um the the D word, political D word, I'm not gonna say it because I don't want this video to get blackballed. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it already will be. They said um it's only a few. Mm -hmm. Only there should be zero. Mm -hmm. One is too many. Mm -hmm. Two is too many. Any number greater than zero is too many. Don't make excuses. Fix the problem. I sent a, a thing to Aaron about that, and he was like, 
he got riled up and made a bunch of Facebook posts. Not not mad at me about the situation because it was stuff that we talked about on that episode that he talked about it and then it came right back up again. I had all my notes ready to to thoroughly discuss everything, only he completely negated the situation. And I was like, that's not what I found, but okay. And then sure enough, that literally the next day. Well, it's, it's another like Hunter. I'm only going to say Hunter. It's another Hunter laptop situation where they're suppressing that bit because they think it hurts them and it does. And it's the same thing. We're too close to November. So it's, yeah, the fact that no, I was, I was just uh, disappointed that oh. he wasn't willing to be candid. Bring that, that was, that was a personal disappointment. Aaron, I'll bring you on again. You can be more open about it or you should be more open about it. No, no need to be um, politically correct yeah. on a podcast. And it locked up again. Okay. So just Why put is... your laptop away. It's fine, Andrew. Okay. So, so talking about Myrtle Beach guy, can you see down there what time we're at? No, I can't see anything. Okay, doesn't matter. Wilmington or Myrtle Beach guy, mm -hmm. the was he the sheriff or a deputy? He was the sheriff, right? I thought he was the sitting sheriff, or was it police captain? He was something, he was, yeah. Mm. You're looking it up? Yes, I'm going to attempt to All find right. it. While she's pulling it up, um, let me let me reiterate something for everybody out there. Somebody made a comment the other day about statute of limitations and how they thought that it was up for a long time. Oh no, you were you were right. Police chief. I was wrong. It's I mean one He is, was right. I was wrong. I mean, one's elected and one's appointed, but that's and one's county and one city. That's really police chief among 10 arrested in Horry County prostitution sting. Police chief Quinton Robinson, 41, is charged with first offense prostitution. Horry County police arrested Robinson and nine others after a prostitution sting on Tuesday. They have to um, all be connected, right? We're too close to them to, for not to be in some way. Um, I mean, anything's possible. Honestly, he paid a hundred and twenty dollars for his prostitute, so she was super high class. Hundred and twenty per what though is the real question. Have you ever seen the? He memes? just paid a hundred and twenty dollars for the interaction with the prostitute. Have you ever seen the memes where it's like? That was probably full service oh, Deadpool, for what he was getting. Deadpool made the joke too when they were playing skee ball or before they played skee ball because she was he like. He bonded out for only $500. That's it. And he's the police chief. Yeah. He should be held to a higher standard. Yeah. So the, remember in Deadpool, because he was, she was like, I'm X amount of money per hour or per day or whatever. And he's like, well, I need about three minutes, so I don't know what to do with the rest. And they want <laughs> ski ball, playing ski ball at the yeah, yeah. But that's how um, when everybody talks about Vegas, I don't like. There's there is like a weird legal loophole with that in places where like as long as it's not if you're not paying for sex, then it's perfectly legal. So so just being an escort and. I can start charging you to spend time with me. Sure. But I'm saying like, I approve of this message. <laughs> no. So, okay. You just wasted a hundred dollars. Keep talking. No. So the, that's like, how do you, that's, that's how people get away with it. You know, could, because that loophole is kind of built in. Oh, we went to dinner and it led to more. I paid to take her to dinner and it led to more. Okay. Whatever. Right? It, no, I can't see that, but okay, whatever. How else do they openly get away with it? They literally, from from at least what media shows, mm -hmm. they put their pictures on apps and websites. Right. So you know who they are. I think it's what they're advertising. They're advertising that 
they're only charging for spending time with. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. So, so that's what they're paying if, for. If it leads to more. Then that wasn't paid for. But what if it falls within the time? It wasn't paid for. This man. I don't know. To be somebody that's that desperate that you pay for it. I could see you paying for it if no. I wasn't in your life. No. No, absolutely not. Yeah. No. You put forth zero effort. They have to pay me. It, you put forth zero effort into anything. I could see you being a serial dater, it not panning out because they all ghost you after like a month or two. And then finally you resort to paying for an escort no. because nobody else will take your call, respond to your text message. And no. you can't date the people on Facebook because you berate them. No, I don't, I don't, I don't pay anybody for anything. Ever. That's correct. <laughs> um, I won't say the derogatory term for that because that'll definitely get us hurt on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Just keep talking. I'm charging you per the, per minute at nah. this point. Um, what other crazy stories before we wrap this up? Anything else that's happened lately that you can think of or know about? Yeah. Pull up... Um, I might be able to pull it up, actually. I can pull it up. My laptop will work enough. Yeah. Okay, so here's a pretty crazy story okay. that I've been kind of following. Give me two seconds. Is it local or no national? Not. Come on. Come on. Is it? Is it national? Yes. And I cannot remember what state it is in. Um, but it's regarding... Oh, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, Kentucky Sheriff Sean Steins killed Judge Kevin oh, Mul yeah. Mullins after the pair had an argument in the judge's office. And it was regarding the judge having inappropriate contact i don't know how thorough that contact was whether it was a relationship just text messages i don't know with the sheriff's daughter mm -hmm. the sheriff and figured they were friends, it out. they so had they, they had gone to lunch went back to the judge's office and then he shot and killed him and walked out mm -hmm. um so yeah he's like the new the guy that you pull up every year for Father's Day. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's the new guy for that. Yeah. He's the the twenty twenty four face for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Crazy times in Kentucky. Apparently there's surveillance. Yeah. Tape. There's there's a whole video because there's a there there was a video camera in the judge's office. I mean, I can pull it up, but I don't think we can play that on the um, episode. Um I mean, it would be, if it's on the news, then it would be, uh, whatchamacallit, fair use. He looks like a Dorfus. The judge? Yeah. yeah. It says he's 54, was 54. Yeah. He just stands over him, shoots him. Okay, so... There's him again. The pr if there was no video of this mm -hmm. and it happens, mm -hmm. totally different story. This video footage is not good for the um, sheriff's case, and or maybe in Kentucky it's different. I don't know, but in a lot of states, if somebody, because he wasn't defending himself, the judge. Yeah, if there he was, was just sitting down. If they're retreating, running away, right, right, right. shouldn't you know you hit, you hit him in their back? That's completely different from somebody actively engaging with you. Mm -hmm. If there was like a heated argument and this wasn't on camera, he's probably free right now. Except for the fact that the judge was not defending himself. I'm saying if the footage isn't there. Mm, right, right, right. Yeah. Free right now. Yeah. Because it's my story and a victim story against a guy that can't tell a story. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, that's, yeah. That, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't feel for the judge at all in this situation. They, Obviously he was the dirt bag. They have, um, like certain, what they call it? It's like, it, it's like temporary insanity, but I know I'm not using the right term. Mm-hmm. I'm by no means a law expert or anything like that, but I consume a lot of content about this stuff. So there's, there's cases that can be made that like it was a one-time thing because of the situation. Nothing like that would ever happen again because when would that situation ever happen again? Like that's kind of the case that they would make. This would never happen again because the kid would never be in that situation. Andrew, what would you do if you found out your friend colleague and superior was having a inappropriate relationship with Charlotte. There wouldn't be a video. I approve of that message. Remember, don't do crime. Don't video the crime. If you do do crime, don't record the crime. And also if you do do crime, don't talk about the crime, especially not on social media Mm -hmm. or anywhere where it can be recorded. I think, first of all, the sheriff had to have known that there was a video camera in the judge's chambers. I mean, that's just common knowledge. Is there audio in any of the ones that you saw? Honestly, I I don't know. I I watch videos on silent as well. So I'm exactly like you in so many ways, Joy. I would be willing to bet that there's not. And the only reason I'm willing to say that is because- Privacy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's for security purposes, not for, yeah. No, I understand. Um, And now I've lost my train of thought. I want to see the video of him walking in and out, like walking in to the judge's chambers, into the courthouse, into the judge's chambers, Mm -hmm. and then also walking. No, remember they went to lunch together. They went back to judge's chambers together. Right. That's what. Like I want to see, like if, like his walk, his Mm gait, his demeanor, if any of that. I'm sure more, more videos will come out. If there's video surveillance from the restaurant, I'm sure that'll come out. Um, there are a thousand cameras obviously going into the courthouse that would come out. Yeah. But yeah, it's obviously going to go to trial. I believe that he went in with the mission of being the only one walking out. See, and the thing with the news and social media these days, when you get, a jury of your peers in a situation like this, Mm -hmm. they already know they already have, you know, like pre formed, uh, opinions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they go through the jury selection, the jury can actually nullify the charges. They don't even have to take it to trial. Mm. They can all say no. Okay. I don't know the last time that's ever happened, but people have brought that up with regard to this case specifically. Gotcha. I could see that. I want to, that's what I want to close on. When I, <sighs> you jinxed it. Yeah. Let's, let's ask right here. When's the last time jury nullified a murder case in the United States? There is no record of Jerry Null handling oh, no. a murder case. Not Jerry Null. Jerry Null. No. When is the last time jury nullification has occurred in the United States? Jury nullification. Unfortunately, I cannot provide it. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> how how can it get it that wrong? It's a it's a technical term. I'm not looking up somebody's name. Okay. Okay. Are you trying to say that my voice, I wasn't talking, speaking clear enough? Correct. Nah. All right. You owe if me tr- $7,000 for wasting my time. If the transcript for this episode gets it right, then we have a problem. Okay. Okay. All right. See you guys. 7,500. See you guys in episode 100 in two days. Goodbye. Bye.